Recall that in Pigeon, variables were all reference variables as opposed to what are called value variables. When we assign a value to a reference variable, what actually is happening is that the value exists somewhere in memory on the heap, but then on the local stack, what gets stored is the address pointing to that location on the heap. In contrast, a value variable directly stores the value being represented itself. So here in C, when we declare a float variable called A, and then we assign the value 9.3 to A, what happens is that on the stack, there is four bytes, and then we directly store it in those four bytes. There is no level of indirection involved. We just store the thing itself directly. So say in C, if you call a function with parameters, the values of the arguments themselves get passed, not addresses pointing to those values. A pointer is a data type that represents an address. Now, there isn't actually one particular data type called pointer. Rather, for every type in the language, there is a type which is a pointer to that type. So say because there is a type float, then there is a corresponding type of float pointer. Or say because there is a type char, there is a corresponding type char pointer. And as you might imagine, a float pointer is a pointer which points to a float and only to a float and a char pointer is a pointer which points to a char and only to a char. You may be wondering though, what's the point of having multiple pointer types? Can't you just have one single pointer type? Because after all, a pointer to a float or a pointer to a char or a pointer to whatever is all just an address, and addresses on a particular platform are always just the same. So say on a 32-bit processor, your addresses are going to be 32 bits in size. On a processor that's 64 bits, you're going to have 64-bit addresses. But within a program, all addresses are going to be the same size. So why do we need multiple types to represent addresses? To answer this question, we first have to actually discuss what you can do with pointers. First off, we can create variables of these types. We can create variables which hold pointer values. The syntax for this is simply to precede the name in a declaration with an asterisk. So here, say, we are declaring an int pointer called foo, a double pointer called bar, and a char pointer called ack. So I can assign int pointer values to foo, double pointer values to bar, and char pointer values to ack. The syntax tends to confuse people because the asterisk symbol is already used as the multiplication operator, and here in this context it's used to modify a declaration to make it a pointer declaration. As we'll see in a moment, the asterisk is also used in another context. So to help you keep these three uses of the asterisk straight, when I show code where the asterisk is used as a multiplication operator, I'll leave it in white. When it's used uh, to declare a pointer, I'll make it orange. And when it's used in this third context, I'll make it green. To get pointer values, use the reference operator. The reference operator returns the pointer value representing the address of some L value. And remember that the term L value refers to mainly variables, but also some other things which you can assign values to, which we'll see later. The reference operator is denoted as simply an ampersand used as a unary operator preceding its operand. So like the not operator, the exclamation mark, it is most commonly written just directly preceding its operand with no space, but you could put a space in between if you wanted to. So say if I have an int variable named i, and an int pointer variable named p, then I can assign the address of i to p by referencing i. The key idea here is that because the reference operator is being used on a variable of type int, then this reference operation returns an int pointer. So this example here actually won't compile because when we use the reference operator on c, which is of type char, what gets returned is a char pointer, and you can't assign a char pointer to an int pointer. Or rather, I should say, you can't do so without explicitly casting. So here we are casting the char pointer value into an int pointer, and then it allows the assignment. This works because C allows you to cast any pointer value into any pointer type, because in the end, an address is really just an address. The dereference operator returns the value being pointed to by a pointer. Very confusingly, this operator is an asterisk used as a unary operator. But as we just saw, asterisk is used in a declaration to make something into a pointer. 
but in an expression the same symbol means the dereference operator. It means to take something which is a pointer and make it not a pointer anymore, to make it the value being pointed to. So it almost means the exact opposite thing in the two different contexts. And if that weren't confusing enough, as I briefly mentioned, the asterisk when used as a binary operator denotes multiplication. So don't be surprised if it takes you a little while to learn to distinguish between these three uses of an asterisk. With time you'll be able to distinguish them by their context. In any case, here's an example of dereferencing. We have an int variable named i, and we have an int pointer variable named p, and we assign the value 3 to i, then assign the address of i to p, and then in the last line, the dereference operator is being used on p, and it has a higher precedence than the addition operator. So first we dereference p, that is we get the value that is at the location being pointed to by p, so because p points to i, we get the value of i, which is currently 3, and so we add 3 to 2, and we assign that to i. So i becomes 5. This actually partly explains why pointers come in different types, because here, when we dereference the pointer, the compiler wants to know what type of value is being returned. Because here we are dereferencing an int pointer, then the compiler knows that this dereference returns an int value. A dereference expression is also actually a valid kind of L value. So here when we assign the value 6 to the target of the dereference of P, the value is written to the location pointed to by P. In effect, we are assigning 6 to I because we are writing the value to I's location in memory. 